Good morning. Just wanted to go over a couple of things with you today before I do a video on a couple of drawings that I've been doing. I wanted to go over my portable kit and what I use when I travel to do plein air or when I travel to do um, uh, life drawing. This is the kit that I take with me everywhere. It's not in the back of my car, but it's basically the one I grab and go. And I have a couple of different pieces that I use, but I'm going to go over them right now with you. Okay, so these are the kits that I take with me. And I'm sorry it's on a dark table, but I want to kind of, you'll see it as I open it up. This is a kit that I use. I carry it with me. It's got a, a strap to carry it over my shoulder. Um, and I'm going, to, and then I have this little kit that I really just tuck into my portfolio with my papers. So let me just open this big kit up first so that you can see what's in it. So in this first area here, I have um, charcoals, Conti crayons, vine charcoals. I have compressed car charcoals. This is basically how we do a little outline on um, pastel paper or even um, on, on my actual charcoal paper. Over here I have an X-Acto knife for sharpening, and I have various blending tools. I have my little sharpener, which I really don't use very often, but sometimes I'm desperate and I use my sharpening uh, little sharpener, just like a regular little sharpener. I got it at the uh, art supply store. I don't like that kind of point that a pencil makes, so I rarely use it. I have a pen because sometimes when I'm going out, I just have a, a, a like a, this... Um, spiral pad, that drawing pad that I carry with me that's as big as this actual bag. And I just draw little quick drawings. So this and these two are traditional blending tools that you will find at the art supply stores. There's a small and a medium and a large. This is for getting in little tight spots. This is, you know, the broader the, the area to, to blend, the better. Um, these are, this is a charcoal pencil, just a regular charcoal pencil. And when you pull this, it, it pulls off a little little thing so you can it kind of keeps a perpetual amount of charcoal going around so that's how that works so you can just keep doing this it takes that off and it's sharper now it's like super long so I have to be careful with that um, again I have another uh, micro um, micro pen these are pencils these are all lead various you know HBs this is a, a large lead pencil this is all lead and so you could sharpen down to a point as sharp a point as you want and you do want to have a piece a sandboard with you so that you could do that it's really important now these are blending brushes and um, there's different kinds there's a flat head a rounded head this is uh, these are flat heads uh, but this is also rounded this is a, also a sharp point. This is a, a, a large sharp point and a medium sharp point. And you can see they're rubber. They bounce just like that. But they're better than using your fingers. You don't want to use your fingers because the oils from your fingers get on your work. And it does cause a change. This is also, these are all rubber. And they're all for different reasons. Uh, sometimes I have a flat area that I want to sort of brush out. And so I'll use a flat tip. Um, sometimes I just have a rounded area that I want to blend out and I'll use something like this, which is a rounded tip. Um, there's all reasons for every brush. This is a pointy one and it also has a flat side that's chiseled. So it can, you could do a, a, an area like, like this or you could get in there with your point. So there's lots of reasons for every different blending tool that you get. Um, you don't usually find these at an art supply store. I buy those at a pastel store. Of course, I always take uh, lots and lots of paper towels because even touching these things right now, my hands got dirty. Um, this is a, a very uh, quick kit that I take with me, and it has just a few other items in it. So this also has another an X-Acto knife for sharpening different charcoals because different charcoal pa uh, pencils work differently on different papers. So I have a variety for different for different reasons. Um, these are charcoal. This is a, um, a charcoal pencil also. It's a little bit smaller and finer, and sometimes that's just for that little lazy line that you want to do that you don't need so much, so much of the medium on the paper. These are all charcoal. This is um, another lead pencil like the other area. Um, charcoal also. Put that in here. Um, these are pastels over here, pastel pencils. 
And they're in different colors that I personally just like to mess around with. They're sort of those, I don't know, jewel tone type colors. I enjoy working with those colors. I have a green and a blue and a, a chartreuse and pink and like a violet and hot pink and dark blue. So it's all for different reasons. I use this color. This is actually a light blue, light blue gray. And you can get pencils in as many different shades as you want, but it's really important to learn how to blend this color with this color and get another color. So I do take this. This is my quick kit. I call that my quick kit. And I have this little kit that's sitting in here. And in here is all different, I just hold them closed, all different kinds of pastels. There is Mount Visions and just every different kind of pastel you could want for different reasons. Um, this is a softer, very soft one. I use this for my shadows. I like that color for shadows. Um, this is a fun, uh, medium tone. These are obviously skin tones and that's a little bit of a blushy color. This is a creamy color. And every, about well, every couple of weeks, I, I literally will go and just wipe them off like this just to make sure I don't have any other color on them because they do bump against each other in here and pick up another color. So this is a very bright blue, and you can't tell because it's so dirty. So when you do this, you get kind of down, but you can see it almost blending on my paper towel. But that's like a, a blue. Here's another blue. It's a different color. It's a different pastel, and it has a different tone that it puts down. And here's another blue. And I use it as my medium shading area. That's another color. So, you know, the point is just get a little small thing of your colors and keep them with you. These are all, these are not half sticks. I did full sticks, and this is probably a third of a full stick, these pieces right here. So that's in here. Let me put that away later. I always carry extra plastic things, I call them, because just like when I work at my pastels, I make a little box. So if I'm starting a piece of artwork and I'm using this color and this color and this color and this color, and even this color. I put them on a separate little thing someplace else on my, my easel or wherever I'm working, and it keeps it separate so that I don't have to keep digging around on what was that color I was using. So I just keep a little extra. I got these little, I think I got them two for a dollar at the dollar store. Very inexpensive. These are my favorite blending tools that I use a lot. I have to get a whole new set of them really soon because they're filthy. Got to keep doing this. This is how we clean those. And what this does is it blends beautifully. And you'll see me use them in my videos. I love them. I can't get enough of them, but I do use them frequently. This one I don't clean much because it has a lot of charcoal medium on it, and you can even draw a line with it. Um, even when you're just starting to sketch, you could draw a line with it. But I love using it to blend my charcoal black. This is for my lighter tones, and these are all these two are just my medium blending tools. And then as I go in, I'm working and working and working. I'll use one side for lights one side for dark, but you have to constantly be cleaning them. Otherwise, you're going to have like a muddy mess in your work. So these are really like some of my favorite tools to use. I, I highly recommend them. They're great instead of using your hands. I mean, my hands are already filthy, but they're really, this is my favorite tool almost exclusively to use in all my work. So I highly recommend trying them. Um, they really give your work in pastel a painterly look. So this is this case. I'm just going to put this gently away because it's not all completely shut. And then I have my other case that I carry with me, um, mostly when I go to life drawing. Um, these are really important. This is just my, my again, another color, again, paper towels, always paper towels. Um, my stick for telling myself, where's the angle? Where's the angle of the shoulders? Where's the angle of the hips? You know, um, where's the angle of the spine? Where's that leg go? So when I look at something, I, I, I give myself an angle and then I paint it directly onto my canvas. It's important to get your angles down. It's important to understand that the arm is just turning a little bit, not a lot, you know. So get yourself one of these. Uh, Viewfinder is a good one. Those are advanced tools. We'll work on those. But this is just a basic little palette. I keep them in a, not a Roy G. Biv thing, but I keep them in the ways that I use them. These are my blues, my greens, and my whites. These are kind of a mix of golds and peaches, like skin tony colors that I like to use for skin tones. And these are colors that I'll use for mediums. Um, I have, you know, violets in here. I use violet a lot. Most people who know my work or friends of me when I paint know that I use 
a lot of violets. This is kind of a gray violet color. Let me see what it's called. Um, I think it's called violet, but it's uh, it's a it's um. Uh, let me see here. It's so dirty. Um, I don't know. It's just pastel. And, and I go to the art supply stores, and I don't look at necessarily, I mean, some pastel pencils are better than others. This happens to be a nice brand. But I look at that. All I care about is that. And if I'm looking at a pencil, I'm looking for a color, and I got these two next to each other, I don't really, if I need this for a pink color for a reason, I need this for a, a shadow gray color, this is, I, I'll just pick it up. And I'll work with it. I mean, sometimes they're really bad, and I don't use them. I sort of put them into my extra box my desperation box, but most of the times I keep everything very, very organized in the studio for myself because a lot of times I'm grabbing and going. So um, anyhow, this is my quick set. I wanted to show it to you, and now we're going to move on and do some videos, okay? Um, just whenever you have a chance to make a little grab and go thing, this is actually called Studio on the Go, um, which is a perfect, really a perfect thing because there's little compartments everywhere in it. I even have the front one I don't think I showed you. And in here I have tape to tape down my paper if I'm outside. And I have even more pastels that I'll take with me. Let's see if I can even open this box. It's very tight. Um, and, I, and when it presses against itself, it's really tight. But in here is even more pastels. And again, di all different kinds of pastels. All different kinds. Um, different colors. If I don't use, if I'm looking for something that's not in that other little square box, I might look in here and see if I have that particular color I'm looking for. Uh, again, some some Conti crayons. And these are kind of, this is your basic, um, this is your basic uh, group of pastels. I don't really use a lot of the colors. In fact, all some of the colors in here aren't even Rembrandts. They're different kinds. I just put them in here. Uh, I certainly don't, almost never use yellows and oranges. Um, I love chartreuse, but I, I have it in a better a better um, pastel, so I don't use it. But sometimes there's some colors in here that I really like that I don't see everywhere. This is sort of a pretty sort of periwinkle color, which I love. Um, this is not uh, Rembrandt. It's another kind, and it's just, I just like, I like putting them next to each other because it reminds me. This is sort of my favorite color palette right here. Um, so you'll, you'll see, you'll create your color palette in your boxes as you go. So, you know, just Make yourself a little on-the-go box so when you, you have a friend that says, hey, let's go out drawing. Okay, and you can grab it, grab a pad of paper, a couple of sheets of paper, and a run. So thanks for watching. Just one more tip before I leave. Please identify your bags so if they're lost, they can be returned. Thanks very much for watching.